it's just, it's just a major violation on your soul, you know, to be accused of something that you didn't do. Back in 1991, the area of Bailey and Delavan there in the city of Buffalo was a high crime area. I went up to Bailey and Delavan, which was Louis, okay, which was like a social place to hang out. Everybody hanged out there on the weekend. And at any given time, it's like 60 people, 100 people out there. And then I goes into the Della contestant to grab a beer, okay? I'm reaching down in the uh, cooler and I hear shots just that quick, pop, pop, right? Instead of staying in the store, I run out of the store, you know, to see what's going on. And this is when I see Tori and Aaron tussling with Mario. And we'll come running up and shooting up in the air, okay? And it's like everybody started scattering. And I jumped in my car and I left. Never returned back to the scene, I was gone. It was my birthday. So a friend of mine called me on the phone. They said they're looking for Valentino. Next thing we know, it seemed like a thousand cops came, drawing their guns, you know, to his head and everywhere. When they accused me of this, like, it hit me so hard, right? It, it just killed me, you know, and I figured that it would all work itself out. When you have that many people, there's no way that the truth is not going to come out, you know? And this thing is going to get cleared up in a couple days. Shortly after, Virtually the next day, somebody else goes on the news and says, it was me, it wasn't him. Lamar Scott confessed to committing the murder that Valentino Dixon was convicted of. So I just I opened fire on him. I, I, the reason why he died, because I, I didn't have any control of the automatic weapon at all. Terra Nova came to visit me one time. And I think the visit lasted 20 minutes. I met him one time before trial, and that was it. And I knew something was wrong. He ain't talked to no witnesses. So we goes in there, and we're talking. And all of a sudden, he just says, get the gun, you know, go up on the corner, put it underneath a bench. We like, how do we know where the gun is? They were very disruptive. They, they were uh, highly emotional and um, they were uh, challenging my ability to try the case. They were challenging um, uh, my efforts on behalf of their son. Um, without, I, I'd say, well, what, what should I be doing differently? Let's speak about the witnesses, because this was their entire case, okay? So go to John Sullivan. You're 150 yards away in the dark. You know what he's wearing? No. And he had two beers and some marijuana and cocaine. I've had witnesses tell me that uh, any one of those substances actually enhances their ability to perceive things. Witnesses will make those comments. Yeah, I was all coked up. I was seeing great. Now let's go to the second witness, Emo Adams. But here we have an affidavit from Roger Putnam, private investigator. I was asked Emo Adams if the testimony he gave during the trial of Valentina was true. Emo Adams stated on more than one occasion that he did not tell the truth. Okay, witness number three is Aaron Jackson. Okay, he says that I picked out slot number four and I identified that as looking like the person who shot my brother Tori and me, but I cannot be sure. He was there, it happened so quick. But you don't tell the police that Valentino Dixon is the shooter. How do we get from that point to the courtroom here today where you're pointing out Valentino Dixon as the shooter? My memory gets better with time. I was convicted on this testimony. When, they gave, when he gave me 39 years or whatever he gave me, I was just, I, I think I was in space. It's indescribable. It really is. I don't think it would ma have mattered if it was your only child or you had 10 kids. In particular, Lamar Scott's confession later on when he's in prison for having shot another guy, where he says, you know, if he'd have believed me in the first place, maybe this other guy wouldn't have gotten shot. That seems pretty compelling. 
Valentino Dixon is an innocent man. And you knew that eight people cleared me of the crime, but you didn't care. How do you discredit all of these people over here because you want to get a conviction? It's in vogue to be able to say that uh, we're helping people that were wrongfully convicted. Even if they aren't wrongfully convicted, that's still in vogue. I know for myself that Valentino Dixon is innocent because Lamar Scott told me personally he did the murder. I saw it with my own eyes that it was not Valentino that shot him. It was Lamar Scott. Of course, it was cops everywhere. They asked me, my friend and my god sister, did we see anything? And we were like, no, because in the 90s in Buffalo, there was a lot of drug-related stuff, shootings, kidnappings. Which, which is irrational fear. The issue is that if they let the fear overcome their responsibility as a citizen, uh, then they've also um, forfeited some of their right to be believed as a witness. I'm told I have cancer. And I'm like, what more can a person take? I just want to be here to see him get out. Let me tell you something about my mom. You can't get a better mother than her, you know? And I want to make her proud. I want to buy her a house. I want to get her off that street. I hated not being able to just call him when I had something urgent to tell him. Like, Dad, I'm pregnant. <laughs> or I'm about to graduate college. I'm so proud of Tina. I just want to get out and, 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 and make her happy. His art, uh, God gave him that when he was born. I saw it in him when he was four years old. I, I don't even know how he was holding this thing. Art is like, it's been like a spiritual journey for me. Even in a dark place like this, you know, beautiful things can emerge and be created. Let me say this, without the artwork, without the praying, I'm probably in solitary confinement with like a lot of guys with my type of time in. It's a lot of things that I want to do and I don't have a lot of time to do it. I'm going to be the best granddad in the world. This is a pardon application right here, and this is a commutation of sentence application right here. Um, I have read through both documents. As a human being, when, when, when you read through this case, um, you know, you, you, you say to yourself, obviously, well, geez, you know, this, this, this this doesn't seem right here. If in fact, um, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Rosenthal um, uh, do in fact submit a, a, a another 440 motion, um, I can assure uh, Mr. Dixon uh, and his family uh, that I will review that uh, thoroughly, I will be fair, um, and I will use um, all you know, the wisdom that I have to give uh, Mr. Dixon um, a, a fair opportunity uh, and a fair review um, on anything that he submits in front of me. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. I'm going to make a difference. <laughs> I'm going to make it right. That's what stand up for justice means. It's deeper than trying to fix the wrongs already made. It's teaching our youth not to make the mistakes that we made. That's what a reform is. Reformation. Change. Do you stand for justice? Do you honor evolution? Just like the time periods, we must evolve and make changes in our society for the better.